Hey, what's going on folks, it's Mike here, and today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be taking a look at C-Line, an IDE primarily used for C and C++ development, but we'll see that it can be used with many different programming languages. But I'm taking a look at this because there was a big announcement recently about C-Line being released for non-commercial use for free. So you get the full IDE, you can use it as a student, an educator, content creator like me, and use their C-Line IDE. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the C-Line IDE here. And you can see this is from JetBrains, so we'll explore them just briefly. If you're not familiar with JetBrains, they do a lot of really cool stuff in the software development community, like building IDEs, refactoring tools, and so on. Um, so anyways, let's take a look at C-Line uh, and JetBrains. So again, if you're not familiar with JetBrains, they are a company that does a lot of uh, tools for developers. You can see IntelliJ, uh, PyCharm for Python, ReSharper for .NET stuff, Writers for uh, Game Dev, with I think Unreal and both uh, Unity and may maybe some other tools, uh, JavaScript stuff, and then of course we're looking at C-Line here. And you can see that's labeled free for non-commercial use uh, available, and that includes Writer and WebStorm. So if you're more interested in those, again, you can check out those IDEs, which I think are pretty similar. Um, in fact, if you you know kind of learn one of these tools, I think they're going to be relatively familiar. So that's kind of nice here. Um, now you can see that JetBrains is quite popular. I know a lot of folks who are watching this channel use uh, VS Code. A lot of folks use Vim, like me as your primary editor. In fact, we're going to touch on that in a little bit because uh, I want to see what the Vim mode looks like <laughs> in uh, in C line. I'm kind of curious. Um, but uh, anyways, yeah, you get this full suite of tools here. There's actually a few kind of interesting things here. Um, with this, this is an integrated development environment, meaning it comes with all the stuff like the debugger. So that's an interesting thing. Uh, refactoring tools, IntelliSense, all that sort of built in. So um, let's just kind of take a look at some of the built in tools. And again, we're going to focus on C line uh, since, you know, we're primarily uh, looking at C based languages on this channel, let's say, at least at this uh, point in time here. Um, so, anyways, um, what's kind of nice about C line is. If you're using lots of different build tools like CMake and Mizan and uh, Ninja and so on, all that can be kind of integrated when you create a project. So that's quite nice here. Uh, but anyways, let's let's actually just show it and kind of explore just a little bit. So if you go to the download, I've already downloaded this for us. It's about a 1.5 gigabyte download on Linux. Um, and again, nice thing about CLine, it's available for Mac and Windows. So this is kind of a must when I'm choosing a tool that's available on you know, the big three operating systems, because I often switch between them um, and, and develop cross-platform software. So that's a nice thing. Uh, pr relatively simple download um, and installation. So what you'll do is download. Uh, let me just show you where I am. Uh, let me go. Uh, so I'm in the uh, bin directory here where I downloaded, uh, basically just in my downloads. Uh, let me go up a level here. You'll find some installation instructions, which you should read. Uh, they're relatively simple here. Uh, but basically, you just run in the bin directory the cline.sh, um, and this is for Linux. For Mac and Windows, I imagine this comes with an installer, and it's probably even easier. Uh, and then there's some optional things you can do to add this to your path otherwise. So uh, anyways, uh, you can take a look at that, uh, and then you can, so if you run the uh, shell script here, uh, the first time it'll, it'll pop up uh, if you have multiple monitors like I do, uh, you know, somewhere there will be an agreement that'll pop up uh, for you to get installed. Uh, and I believe you just need a email address to create a free account uh, to get the uh, non uh, or, the, or the commercial, uh, non commercial uh, version of this. So uh, anyways, here's a little project here that I created, uh, just to make sure that the install works. Let's close this and uh, uh, start a new project. So sorry, again, things are flying off to other windows here. Uh, let's create a new project. I'm going to call this YouTube video uh, two. I already had one that I was playing around with, um, but you can see there's a bunch of different uh, C++ projects here, uh, CUDA stuff, and there's all sorts of templates and stuff that you can install. So the plugin market, let's say, or infrastructure for JetBrains tools and C-Line is quite large. So again, uh, supporting other different languages. Um, but uh, anyways, let's just build a C++ executable. Uh, I'm going to shoot for Let's put in C plus plus twenty three here, and let's see what happens. But you can tell they're, I mean, they're they're very modern. They're already thinking about twenty six. Uh, and if you click this add onboarding tips, which I did earlier, it'll give you a bunch of tips about how to use the ID. We're just gonna play around with this. Um, so, anyways, let's bring this in here. Uh, and one thing that I made sure I did find on settings, uh, this is a little quality of life thing here. Uh, under the appearance here, uh, which you probably can't read yet, but I'm gonna zoom in. 
Uh, seems kind of silly, but I like tools that I can actually resize again for YouTube videos. And if you have like a 4K monitor in front of you, it's nice to be able to use all that real estate and be able to see and click the same buttons and so on. So actually, uh, you know, a nice feature there. So um, anyways, this looks like it has uh, a lot of the different things you can do with Windows. So at this point, we, um, I don't know, could play around with just the layouts a little bit, uh, as you'd expect if you're coming from other uh, text editor or IDE tools. That's pretty standard, but you get all that stuff here. Uh, you can see this project that I made uh, comes with uh, CMake provided, so that's kind of nice. I guess if you want to, you know, get your introduction into this or other build systems, uh, these things start to matter more when you're working on team projects. Um, you know, for example, some of the places where I've worked, um, you just want to see make files so you can generate build files for, you know, whatever system that you got to build on. If I've got to take this over to Mac or whatever, somebody can use the CMake to generate, you know, the, the C line project file or, or do a build or whatever on a server, etc. Uh, so anyways, let's just run this just to make sure that it's uh, working here. Uh, we get our hello world here. Um, so that's that's kind of nice here. So we got the ins and outs here. Um, now, again, if you're like me and you uh, often do things from scratch, um, you do have a terminal here. Let me click on this button here, terminal. Uh, so again, you can see the project here uh, where it was built. And I could still do my, you know, just like we've done on most of our YouTube videos here, compile out the project. Um, and, you know, it'll, you know, I could compile and run it in the terminal just like this. So, you know, if you don't want to use all the features of the IDE, right, you've still got your terminal here. Probably what most folks care about, what folks often care about, um, at least when I'm you know, working with my students, and in part that's why I'm making this video, is you want to be able to click here and set a breakpoint. Okay, so uh, there is a debug mode here, so I can do debug. Uh, so let's click on that. And uh, then you're going to see our little debugger here. I'm going to move this up here. Um, and then I've got my resume program, step over, step into, uh, step out, etc. You know, most of the, the basic stuff that you would need. Um, so let's go ahead and resume our program and you can see that it finishes. Now let's make it just a little bit interesting um, just to show you some of the debugger here. Let's actually create a, you know, a variable auto i equals zero. Um, let's create a string here. Uh, and it's giving me some suggestions here. Uh, yeah, let's call it input. Why not? Uh, and actually, as you're seeing me type here, input and then tab to auto complete. Uh, and out of that semicolon, which is nice. They got a little bit of a quality of life things here uh, that are nice. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead and rerun this program in debug mode. Uh, and let's see what a interesting stuff that we get in our debug output. Okay, so we've got our string here, which is empty. So we've got all of our locals displayed. Um, we still have a console and this is running in GDB. Uh, I guess that's what it detected by default, what I have here. So I can still uh, use my GDB uh, commands and have it integrated here. So again, I'm a big proponent. Again, I'm going to give you some resources in my GDB and Vim stuff at the end here. Uh, but none of that goes to waste if you're using you know this IDE. It's still useful uh, for you to be able to explore these things. So that's really, really cool here. Uh, and then let's see if I do info locals, I should see I and input just like we see in our IDE. Okay. So again, uh, for folks who you know, especially when you're working on large projects, sometimes it's nice to just have this displayed already, but you still have your GDB view if you want. Uh, you have a memory view too, which is kind of neat. Uh, again, these starts of things really start to matter when you're debugging. Let's print out the address of I and just pop that in here uh, just so we can see. I mean, our I is, uh, did I initialize it? I did, I was good. I initialized it to zero. <laughs> so let's view it. We can actually see it in memory uh, and we can see I mean, that happens to print out the ASCII character for the, the zero here, I guess. <laughs> um, or actually, I don't know if I want to commit to that information yet. But anyways, um, anyways, that's how you can do a little bit of a debugging here, view your memory, and so on. And I'm sure there's a lot of other uh, neat tools here. Um, I can actually, let's see, is it going to let me? I think it is going to actually let me move the uh, pointer back and do a little bit of time travel debugging here. For that, you should look at UDB and some of those other uh, time travel debuggers um, for, for those sorts of things. Uh, but that's kind of cool here. Uh, if I can, I guess I could, yeah, let's let's see what happens if I step forward here. Let's see, step into, uh, let's, here, let's just resume the program. We'll go back. Yeah, well, okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, so anyways, we should play around with some stage. So anyways, you get some of the nice IDE things. I know Visual Studio has that, um, and I know some, uh, you know, the buggers support this, like GDB, UDB, etc. 
Um, so anyways, that's a nice feature. The other nice things, again, if you're just like looking at code base, hovering over things that are auto uh, or input, right? And seeing that it's a string type, um, the code completion, these are always the big things, right? Um, you know, okay, so if I hover over append, uh, let's do that. And then I can just hover over it again, append to a string. I mean, that's kind of obvious, you know, some of these standard library things here, but it's giving me yeah, some good information here. You know, just just about the right amount here. So I like that, uh, which is cool. Hello. Uh, okay. Uh, let's try to break this thing. Let's try to see what happens if we break our build. Um, ooh, I know what to do. Uh, so let me let me go ahead and just run this. Let's see if it, is it going to behave if I just have this string. Okay, maybe it was smart enough. Let's be explicit. Uh, let's do some C plus plus twenty three stuff. So getting more on the cutting edge. Let's do print. Uh, our input is, and then we'll use a format string just so we can kind of get a feel for what this looks like here. Uh, okay, let's see here. Is it gonna like that? Non-const L value. Let's see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's let's just try this here. Let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, no matching function print. Okay. But I did say I wanted to use C plus plus twenty three. So let's see here. Um, okay. Maybe it's trying. Maybe it didn't find it. Let's play around. Uh, I think I can go into settings, maybe in the project settings. Let's see if we can fix this. Let's see if we could use print in advanced features. Uh, actually, I might just be able to get away with print here. Let's see, did it find it? Okay, pretty good. Must must already be setting my, you know, I guess I've got the standard marked here as 23. Let's see if I do 20, will it just break? Uh, let's do that here. Okay, yep, it will. Okay, so it is just using the, you know, you got your C make there. Um, otherwise, I think it can go into, let's see here. I'm just going to search, build, uh, I think in tool chains here. Let's see here. Yeah, I've got my, I mean, I've got my C++, um, like you've seen in most of my videos here. Um, and then let's see, somewhere I could probably put in my uh, flags here. Let's see, flags. Uh, let's see here. That's kind of interesting. Inspections. Build, execute, and deploy. Okay, I've got my sanitizers too. That's actually cool. Um, so you might want to turn on some of these things. I mean, there's a lot to explore here. And again, it's kind of a nice thing with your IDE if you can just turn on the, these things here. Um, compiler. Let's see here. Use custom compile. Okay, probably in tool chains where I was. I think I was in the right spot. Uh, build, execute, and deploy. Tool chains. I got my make file. I mean, I could put this in the C make file as well. Um, yeah, I should probably just do it properly in the um, C make file like we were doing there. Um, let's see here. Oh, I guess there are. Yeah, here's my C make options. Yeah, I could always cheat and add this as a build option here, maybe. Uh, but anyways, yeah, you got all the stuff in there. Uh, so if you're similar, if you're used to using IDEs or some of the other uh, JetBrains product, that's gonna feel uh, pretty familiar here. Um, there are some other interesting things. I don't know how to quite demo here because I don't have any friends right now. <laughs> but this code with me uh, feature here that looks really, really cool. So be curious, you know, for folks watching this video, th these are the types of things that I think could be really interesting if you're working in a team environment, right? Most of my projects are, are solo right now, right? That I'm doing or leading here. Um, but that's pretty cool um, and something that I haven't seen in a lot of tools. Maybe I should look at more tools, but that that's kind of cool would I imagine this sort of Google Doc style uh, writing? I think there's going to be a lot of interesting stuff. Um, you know, being able to actually pair a program properly is kind of interesting. Um, obviously, there are some AI tools here um, that, that look really interesting here. So again, I haven't played around with uh, this sorts of stuff too much. But again, it's all integrated in this environment, which is really, really nice. So again, those are nice things here. Now, uh, something else I do want to take a look at here um, which I was alluding to is uh, I Googled around. I want to see their Vim mode. Okay, so uh, C line offers a powerful Vi Vim emulation mode via the plugin. So, idea Vim. Okay, so uh, let's see if I can do that and I can have my own idea Vim RC. That's kind of cool. So, um, let's try this out. Let's download this plugin here. Uh, see if we can customize this. And again, this is something that I have not done yet. Uh, so I'm just going to go to this settings icon plugins uh, and let's see here ID uh, Vim I was exploring around for uh, let's just type in Vim and see what shows up here uh, marketplace okay this is the first one 
Uh, let's see here. Okay, let's do the one that they recommend. Uh, it looks like it's from JetBrains itself. And then Stalt. I might have to do a restart here. Uh, let's apply here. That's pretty cool if I don't have to, but it doesn't matter here. Here's what's installed. Okay, uh, now let's see here. How do I... I wonder how I use Vim mode here. Oh, I am... Hmm, how to demonstrate this to you. Oh, this is cool. So I get all my Vim bindings here. Um, let's see, what's a Vim thing that I could do? Here, I'm just going to cheat and use a uh, screen key so you can see that I'm using the uh, Vim shortcuts. Um, so I, I don't know, I could search for something like this. Uh, uh, what else here? Go down through my code. Uh, let's see, I can, can I fold stuff? Maybe can't fold stuff, that's okay. I could fold at this this level here, so that's on the IDE, but I can use all my bindings for moving around. So again, this is another reason to learn Vim, so you can just hop around here. Uh, so yeah, that's that's actually a pretty nice plugin. It's got all the code motions, uh, or at least many of the code motions in the visual mode. Um, and then, let's see, actually if I do colon, uh, ooh, nice, okay. So I can do stuff here, so I can, uh, I don't know, search or enter commands. Uh, okay, pretty nice, uh, yeah, let's, Let's just do something here. Um, find parentheses, next. Okay, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. So that's actually, um, that's a winner for me, being able to use my Vim bindings, and it looks like pretty seamlessly here in the build system because, um, you know, that, that's a whole other rant about learning Vim and the importance of that in a environment that you can't SSH into for whatever reason um, and have a screen like tunneled to you, or maybe you need to do some text uh, edits. So I always encourage people to use Vim, uh, you know, primarily a Vim user, uh, but even able to use it in an IDE is a uh, kind of a necessity uh, for me. So uh, that is satisfied here. So very, very cool. Um, and again, pretty responsive. Uh, I should test this out on a larger project, but overall pretty happy with this experience. And uh, since this is a free tool, I'm probably gonna you know, start looking at this. And, and one of the reasons that it might be interesting to look at um, again is for folks who are doing stuff um, you know, where it's nice to have sort of a template project, like you saw the CUDA thing, or just kind of getting started again, because you never know a team you're going to end up on. I've had a few teams where, for instance, folks had to use an IDE uh, in a project file. So, um, you know, that was sort of shared amongst the project. So um, anyways, there's a lot of nice stuff here. There's a ton of other features here. I mean, we looked at the debugging stuff. Um, there are a few other nice quality of life things here that I'm seeing. Uh, the version control stuff I haven't jumped into too much, but again, having that all kind of logged here can be nice. Um, the program structure is also here. Let's just add another uh, function here, void, foo, uh, something like that here. So you can kind of jump around here, which is nice. Um, again, that's that's sort of quite help, healthy, uh, helpful, healthy, helpful. <laughs> um, if you um, you know have a large project to be able to do some of these uh, things and quickly jump around here. So. Overall, very, very nice here. Uh, tool, you know, JetBrains has always done a really nice job with their developer tools. So uh, props to them for making this free and available and um, having a Vim mode, which I really, really like, <laughs> uh, as well as a very rich uh, ecosystem. So, so check these guys out if you want. There's probably something for everybody here. Um, and I think they're doing a lot of interesting stuff. I really am a tool developer. So um, I like seeing what other tools people are building. This was brought to my attention. So I was happy to take a look at it. and. Uh, C-Lion's always been the favorite IDE of my students, uh, generally speaking, um, at least at the universities that I've taught at. So um, again, very, very happy to see that this is out and about. Uh, so with that said, folks, I'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Again, as I mentioned, uh, I have stuff on debugging uh, with GDB, LDB, et cetera, uh, primarily GDB in this course, uh, Vim stuff, you want to learn those shortcuts and other things and lessons that you'll find on YouTube otherwise. Um, so with that said, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this video, this investigation into the C-Line IDE. Uh, and if you like these types of videos where we dig into some tools and do a little brief tutorial or play around with them, uh, let me know in the comments. These are fun to do. And again, it's fun to look at really, really nice tools. So well done, JetBrains. And anyways, with that said, folks, I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.